Okay, folks, just basically going to take you through. Uh, had some hip music and so forth and so on, but basically going to just, just take you through some facts. You can see there it says very large array. Basically, they just listen to everything at all times, even down here on Earth, folks. And then basically, everything out here on Earth gets listened to also. Everything. Everything anybody says can be listened to at any time. And then basically we find objects by listening and we also listen. And there are electrical signals. Been surprised. The government has been so astonishingly surprised of what's out there that the idea that there has been movies made and everything's all lo, 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 secret, scary, scary. Well, there is nothing to be. And then the idea that there is to be because there is signals out there, okay? Now, we do know that Jupiter has been found to put electrical signals off. And we retouched this stuff. Signals, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Communications. Beano, asshole, black. Big prick, Beano, black. Uh, is basically that you know about a lot of stuff with the sun here. Now, I got the video off the sun here, and we'll just, I'll back it up a little bit down here in Antarctica. And we will go ahead and show you that when you're watching this, uh, what I was wanting their people to watch, and basically it's good that I'm going over top of with uh, fixing the audio and so forth on this. This should be working okay. You watch this iceberg, and as the motion of the Earth is moving in the ocean, especially since it's at the South Pole, that you'll get these icebergs to move which, it does, since it's at the pole, it's hard to tell, because this should be south, okay? But the idea they're moving, uh, which would be, the right would be more than likely to the west, and it doesn't really matter here. Everybody always tries to anal me in getting on an exactness. So basically, we get the figure that west to east, that this iceberg moves. Now, when I'm messing around with the player, which I'd already recorded this down here, I go back forth and so forth. Now, what I'm showing you is that, that this is not the sun. If you watch the time and the clock here, and also see right now, it's going to make it look, because it's 625 UTC, you would think that that, just this here, is the sun right there. Well, no, it's not, okay? Uh, we are at an all-time recorded closeness to the sun when we are supposed to normally in the winter solstice be at an all-time far away from the sun. And basically, I'm re-audioing this and showing you this. Uh, and it, basically, I think it films okay, because the idea that you can still, if you always watch all my videos at full screen, and what basically what I was doing is explaining that the idea that when the sun sets at 6 something in the evening, okay, p.m. hour, that the idea that this is a 24 hour clock, so this is a.m. And it makes people think, well, the idea that it's just the sun that's coming up. Well, as you watch what I've got playing here, this has been going on when in the evening, when the sun goes down, the sun's been putting off, because what's in the supergiants and so forth, has been putting off a maybe a third of that brightness on the ocean all over the place. If you watch all the footage from any webcams that you'll get from any ship when the sun's going down around 6-something, or any webcam that's around the ocean at 6-something, you'll usually see a mark like that, but is very less illuminative as that, because it's all like a bunch of little tiny star clusters in a brightness, okay? About, about that size but when it's going down. Now this is, when it first comes along, is if you see the clock, and I can think I can freeze this one, you will see that it basically comes in at uh, some UTC. It's going to be real small. You're going to have to look. But it comes in at the AM hour, and I'm going to go back here to back up the tape real fast. Okay, So it comes in at the AM hour of 625, but it's even way earlier than that, because here we're going to find where it brings up the steam off of it, and there is where it first starts coming up. See, this is not the, uh, the sun, because it's only t 20 minutes after the hour of UTC, okay? And you see that at the right here, it starts to come up, okay? So sometimes when I make mistakes and play over a video here to give you the idea that, okay, we listen to everything in space, we get uh, imaging just like you get off of uh, the same technical as pretty much like a uh, photocopier and then you get the color pictures of what's actually out there in space from radar and signals and we can't get into too much more technical on it but that's the layman easy way to explain it so watch for these this one moves around a lot there's other these icebergs well, and then that's the other thing is the melting and the heat that's coming there that there is a lot of you see all the icebergs breaking off lots down in antarctica okay down south 
Okay, I don't know about up north. There haven't been anybody studying. I, I'm sure there is people studying. So we need to have people start looking into that a bit. But we get all the supergiant sun action from down here. So this is what we're looking at. This is the earliest I got on the tape. So you're seeing that basically at just 20 minutes after the hour of midnight and even before, because this was coming up before, like over here you'd have this over here when it was coming up, there is a supergiants of all those more than 100 suns that are stars. Yes, the sun is a star, just our sun that we know of, okay? And there is the sun in the supergiants with 100 stars. That makes like 101 stars with the sun included, which the sun has been in there for quite a while, since probably about 2000 and maybe 1997, even honestly, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And there's vast distances out there in space, and we have light speed that light travels to Earth. Now, it's taken like 65 years from any point in time for the sun from some of the supergiants to get to Earth, okay? And then so I can quick uh, and save some video time and go to some of the meteor stuff at nighttime. This will show you that basically way early and it's still only 1 o'clock in the morning, 1.55, that that's a small sun that's coming up from way out in the supergiant somewhere. And it might even be more than one because it's hard to tell. Now this one is might not be the one that has the dark object that's coming around it either because this is farther to the south, okay? And it doesn't matter at the south angle that we're getting on this. And it makes uh, sense because... It, the other object that we're getting is farther north. You see the heat that comes off of the the, uh, the cold Arctic water as this sun comes along and heats up. As you've seen that, there you bit back up the tape because basically I was showing you that the idea that factually I can speedily show you that see how that steam comes up off of the ocean, the Arctic cold ocean water. As I click through here, you should be able to see that steam coming up off of the water. And as I try to do that, I screw up and I don't get it. But as you were, if you back up the footage, you will see, there you go. There's the steam starting to come up off of it. And then you get, yeah, fog, a duh. See? So there it is. And then at the time, and see, this is where we're back at at 6.05 because I'm going over recording that. But I showed you earlier, there's 3 o'clock in the morning, okay? And there's the steam coming up off. And there's more steam, fog, okay? And then the sun starts coming up with this object also. But... This was already, and then there people are going to say, oh, the sun bends over. No, the sun alone can't bend all the way over 360 degrees around the Earth. The supergiants combined with the sun can. And that's what happens, ladies and gentlemen. That's why at 1 in the morning and 20 minutes after the hour of midnight, and then you get the motion of the waggle of our tail on Earth. This is down in Antarctica. You will see that iceberg. And I'm not playing a trick on you. You will see it move left to right because of me backing and forward and on the videotape. But if you actually watch the footage down there and watch these icebergs, since they're at the bottom of the world's gravity and the heavy waters down at the Antarctic at the South Pole, you will see those icebergs, and I've had my pointer up there a long time ago and I recorded, they move left to right, east to west. And I don't care if it's north to south or southwest to northwest or something like that, okay? They move in goofy directions because they're stuck down there. There's only certain areas that they can go. Now, you could go down there, and there's even been people, a lot of money, go down there and try to, and I think it's even possibly been done, but there's been money thought of going after an iceberg. And you see some of that steam even comes up off of the icebergs up back there. Okay, so Antarctica South is uh, interesting to watch because we've also seen the light orbs down there before also at this southern camera, and you can watch the steam come up off of the cold-ass Antarctic water, ocean, with that little sun that you see that when it's coming around, it does not have a little dark object on it. And yes, the sun's with it, okay? But as you see, that pops in and away like our other little tiny sun. And then at a little bit later, at the 7 and on, maybe about 8 o'clock when this goes to the left all the way, you will get brightness from all of the supergiants in the sun. There you go. Here it comes. There's the sun now. There's the sun, okay, during the day. Not that little one that went by to the right. Because see, here's the sun up bright now. Okay, at 1300 hour, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Yep, height and the sun and the supergiants and it all exists. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so let's go to some data, the earthquakes we've been having. And basically, let me pop that back real fast because that's from last night and I'll probably be able to put live earthquake and give you a live update. But last night, we had, or yesterday evening, that we had, uh, let me cue it. So yesterday evening, we had a 4.2, and I don't have a slider because this is taped. We had a 4.2 in Nevada, okay? And then there was also a 3.3 high up in Canada, I think, or very high northern border. But basically, that should be up in Canada somewhere. So there's been some interesting uptick down here, and then we'll end up seeing what's live maybe on the next video or maybe if we got time here.
Now, Bino Black's promoting her right here, and she's hard to look at, so be careful with your eyes, ladies and gentlemen, and then let's listen to the recording here. So, and I've got to cue something up. And 35 complaints says she saw an unknown bright object fall from the sky to the east of where she was. And four, we'll check it out. And unfortunately, that's all I have right now. I want to give Sheila a big uh, high 10 and basically high 20, toes and hands and all. And anyway, just me, Sheila and I disagree on the idea that she is basically, well, I don't know. I've never heard it out of her mouth, but she basically, Sheila aliens, and she has always got UFO footage. Now, I am like her. I love the UFO footage because the idea that it usually shows us objects in the sky. Me, as far as, and I don't know what she believes in, but I think we, maybe we agree. But the idea that Martians and aliens, forget it, UFOs, uh stuff that's actually in the sky like space weather and so forth and so on so anyway we're getting a lot of asteroid action and thank you Sheila because basically she's getting a hold of the audio that they're getting on because basically meteorites last night and I'll, hopefully we'll get to Asgard now hopefully when I point here you'll see the idea that all over there in Texas and so forth and I'm not, not going to be able to differentiate them too much and then you get Round Lakes, Beach, Illinois and stuff like that so basically this is a good one to watching for the deal up here on this basically there is your Okay, so, and then, uh, let's go look what we got. Now, we've had a 7.1 of recent, and I'm not sure if it was last night, okay, 7.1, and then also here, a 3.0. Now, let's look at night sky, okay, 7.1, and remember last night that, that uh, Kepler uh, came by, okay, and I think it's 30-something, okay, so this is what we got last night that they saw in Texas, okay. I want to thank uh, them there because basically they're the ones that I think are, so it doesn't really matter, just go hit, hand, you know, high five out to them. And the all sky down there caught this action, okay? And then also let's go to Asgard. So way the hell out, but the massiveness that we end up seeing it here, so the idea that it's got to be massive out there in space if we can see it here at that far so no matter, these are both way the hell out. That's 84 IU. Okay, remember we're only one IU from the sun. Okay, so way the hell out and huge and dark, uh, huge and bright at night. Here's an electrical image from one of them last night. Remember all those satellites I showed you? Okay, not those exact ones, but possibly, and they bring in these images. Okay, that, and there's another shot. Okay, and then let's go ahead and go to uh, Asgard. Now this is as big as I can show it on the show you know, all at the same time, but this is pretty much the action from last night. Now, if you pay attention and go to all these dates here, you'll see other stuff. But now, what's in that? Yes, because the idea that they've NASA lied to us when they had that Thursday about three or four months ago that they uh, told us, no, there's nothing close to, or well, yeah, some of this stuff's way the hell out. Some of the stuff's real close, like that uh, Oort cloud that we have in Hawaii and also that we've been seeing from the uh, space station. Okay, this was the last night made a lot of people in Texas go what the flip because it was so damn big and bright. But it's actually that damn far out. Those that 85 and that 30 something are you out away? Okay, so that's there is massive stuff in space, ladies and gentlemen, and it's moving around very very fast as you see that this stuff goes by. And I'll show you the video of this stuff going by in outer space very damn fast. So stuff can just all of a sudden come from who knows where and something hit earth no the odds are very low but the earth to hit something and have flies on its windshield or bugs like you do in the summertime ladies and gentlemen go up around michigan and drive around hell slow and you're going to get a bunch of bugs on the on your front of your deal anywhere you in the united states folks bugs and the earth going through space at more than 66,000 miles an hour 6,000 miles an hour faster than we normally do and we oscillate like a bullet and our electrical magna and there's just a lot of stuff to always pay attention to and talk to a lot of people at Touch Sense and they will pretty much more than likely to give you a lot of explanations about a lot of this stuff. So let's play up one of these movies. And then looking at Night Sky, don't forget to take your eye off the sun because holy crime and he's look at those. Okay. Holy moly. And then we know that that's more than likely Mercury there. A blaze. Okay. Either that or Venus. So either either. A should be Venus, and I believe that that would probably be Venus also. Mercury and Venus is pretty much what we got around by the sun right now. Okay, and that's awesome. Holy moly, folks. That's what we're talking about, okay? I'll put the movies in, but these are better.
Thanks for boring with the next video.